Hi, in this video, I'm going to be speaking to a medical doctor and a qualified scientist, if that means anything, about carbon dioxide, climate change, net zero, and whether or not it really has any authentic scientific basis. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Hi everybody, I am joined once again by Dr. Jerry Waters. This is the, I think, third time on my channel, Jerry. It's, it's great having you on. You're, you're a lot of fun. And yeah. um, you, you are, you're standing for, as an independent candidate for the European elections, June the 7th in Ireland. This video will go out before that. And hopefully it'll give people in your constituency an idea of the sort of man that they're going to have represent them. Do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Please. Well, first of all, I, I'd like to state you are very privileged to have me on three times. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know whether you, 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 you consider how lucky you are <laughs> to, to, to get the benefit of my massive, massive knowledge. But apart from that, let's try and introduce myself. Yes. Um, I'm a bus driver son from a corporation housing estate in Dublin. I put myself totally, absolutely through medical school. Ended up with a wife and two children, lived in a 16-foot caravan, lived in a 24-foot mobile home, lived in a corporation housing estate, or a yeah, flat, and began studying st surgery. Decided after a few years of surgery, I loved it, absolutely loved it, but I, it, it wasn't to, suited to me in, in the, from the point of view that I found it very difficult to delegate. I found it very difficult to leave my patients, with result I would have been working all night and all day and all weekends for the rest of my life. Mm. Whereas general practice that I went to was something that I could actually live on site. Uh, I, I lived 100 yards, 200 yards from my home uh, for my surgery and spent 40 years as a GP. Um, the, the, the short story is I was suspended from the Irish Medical Register for refusing to go along with the masking, the uh, social distancing. I refused not to or rather to send my patients away unexamined. I refused to go along with the PCR scam test and I refused to administer the vaccine. As I say, I wouldn't put into your arm or I wouldn't put into mine and yes. was suspended from the medical register for, in effect, being a danger to my patient, patients by refusing to inject them. That's me in a nutshell. Yes. Now, which, Jerry, um, just just on that, just thank you because we're recording this on the third of June, and the con congressional hearings with Fauci are going on a going ahead now. Caught snippets. He did it, concede a few days ago that there was no scientific basis for the lockdowns and the masking. And then there's AstraZeneca. Very recently, they submitted their trial data to court as evidence of why their vaccine should no longer be administered. So I think you've been well and truly vindicated. In that regard, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Now, how did I know? I suppose I knew because I'd, I'd been a GP for forty years, and the one thing you learn and experience teaches you is pattern recognition. There was no pattern outside of the normal winter flu that would suggest there was a deadly virulent virus in the community. I took that as as, as my sign that I was right, um, and as it happened, I was. I I, I didn't require papers or studies or I, I i went on my gut feeling that there was nothing there yeah um and and it, as it happens i was proven right totally um now it, we're going to get on to the idea that i'm a scientist that's a very nebulous term very difficult to define but it fundamentally i suppose differentiates you from somebody who did a, a bachelor of arts in english literature or something mm. Um, I, did, I did a social work degree. That's what I did. Yeah, the, yeah. They're, they're what you call the soft science. I think the social work would it? Um, it. It's somebody who actually studies chemistry, physics, biology, botany, zoology. You, you know, any of those fields that have a, a, a concrete basis. And the concrete basis, fundamentally, is that when you do, you know, when you when you when you drop something from from the Eiffel Tower, it hits the ground within within one hundredth of a second every time. 
you know, taken into air resistance and all that, 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 that things are reproducible. Experiments are reproducible over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you you do a chemical, you do you you do a chemical reaction, and you add A to B, and C and D come out of it every time, and you yes. do it you do it a thousand times, and these are reproducible studies. So that's fundamentally what a scientist does. A scientist is somebody who follows the scientific method, and the scientific method fundamentally is that you you look at a problem, you ask what's going on, and then you put forward. A, 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 a hypothesis or hypothesis as to what's going on and then you set about proving it or disproving it and that's a scientific method there's no such thing as following the science that's rubbish as Fauci would say absolutely rubbish um, and he knew it this is the point this is the mendacity and the dishonesty of the man that he used the term that will bamboozle people who don't even know what science is yes and uh, this is the fundamental you know this is how they get away with it and this is one of the reasons why I want to get into Europe. I want to go into Europe with my scientific brain that has been fine-tuned in science since 1971. Yes, yes, absolutely. And you, you did mention to me that you were, I think you studied chemistry. And... Well, yes, yeah, so initially in, in, in our um, undergraduate years, that's what we do. We do chemistry, biology, um, physics. You, you, you do that as an introduction, because you can't understand biochemistry, you can't understand organic chemistry, you can't understand molecular biology unless you've done the uh, the chemistry, Basically. unless you've got the, the blocks to build upon. Now, I happen to be dyslexic. I couldn't read until I was 12 or 13. And uh, I learned a different way from most people. I had to understand the basics of everything, which resulted going through university. I had to I couldn't take notes because if I took notes, I couldn't, I couldn't read them. I genuinely couldn't read my own notes. I would try as hard as I could to try and be careful and, and write down what I was saying. And after about four or five words, um, I, I, I began to lose the letters and the shapes of them and that. Um, I was fortunate down through the years that my secretary somehow or other could understand what I was writing. And, okay. and the ca local chemist. Even though when you're, in, 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 when you're writing prescriptions, it's kind of a code that's easily understood. But um, I had to learn things through the basic understanding of how everything worked, which resulted that in a lecture, I sat bold upright, um, not, not in a fetal position taking notes as, as the rest of the class did. I, um, I sat bold upright listening to the professor or the lecturer, and I would, I, I would pull them up and say, oh, I don't understand what's going on there. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? So that 50 years later, I still remember my signs. Right. Well, that's the difference between learning something by rote versus integrating it. That's right. I had to. I had to. Yeah. I had no choice. Yes. Okay. Now, I want to uh, move this on to um, a point you made earlier, and you and I talked about offline, about the climate change agenda being more of a, f of a religious faith than of being a matter of science. And, and um, because it's almost impossible to question anyone about climate change or to have a conversation. Uh, you know, when I've attempted to do that, people get... Sometimes they, maybe I get passionate about it as well. I'm sure, right? But no, 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 you can't question it. It would be like saying to a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew that there's no such thing as God. It would be like they can't countenance that conversation. So for what I find with people who haven't really, really examined the climate change agenda, they've just swallowed or adopted or accepted what's been told to them without digging deeper past that, that pretense, past that ruse, actually digging deeper for themselves and listening to the other side of the argument that it is, it is the, it's, it's like the COVID cult. Just, but just you're absolutely it. correct. You're absolutely correct. It is a faith. It is, it, it, it is based on faith because if they look at the science behind it, it blows the whole thing out of the water. Yeah. And one of the, before we get into the science and we will, one of the things that, that I think is a, is a red flag for me is the censorship. You cannot have scientific inquiry when there's censorship. What you do have when there's censorship is propaganda. So, for example, exactly. taking to the, the COVID, that, that whole episode, then the, the only way out was to mask social distance and then wait for the injections and then roll our sleeves up, have the injections, have the injections. Any conversation about vitamin D or ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine or strengthening your immune system or exercising or hanging out with other people or prayer, all the things that are good for our health. No, 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 no. All censored, omitted from the discourse. And it's the same deal with climate change. So people say to me, 
oh, 97% of the client, of the scientists agree. No, 97% of the client, scientists that are in the pay of the WEF or the IPCC or their partners, they agree. I want to take you now to, uh, I want to share my screen. But, that, 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 that 97% was a corrupt, absolutely corrupt study. And 97% didn't agree. That was a total, absolute lie. Well, they and it, was Obama, it was Obama who repeated that. And yeah. he knew it was a lie. They weren't. They, 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 they were asked, did they feel that man, it, it turned out that about 11% said or agreed that man was having any appreciable input into climate. It was the way that the questions were asked. And as I say, it was totally disrupted that particular, it was an Australian, um, I think it was some sort of Australian cartoonist or something. I can't remember the exact details of it, did that study. Yes. And like Goebel said, if you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes accepted as truth. And then people, That's right. people, people do not question. They don't question. They don't question. They just accept. So let me share my screen. This is clintel.org. I'll have the link in the description below. And this is uh, a website set up by a whole bunch of scientists who say there is no climate emergency. And they have published a declaration, the World Climate Declaration. And these are the signatories. Obviously, these are people that have no knowledge whatsoever in, with science, right? And let's have a look. Here we go. Nobel laureate Professor John Clauser. Now, he won the Physics Nobel Prize in 2022. Nobel laureate Professor Ivor Giava, Professor Gus Burkut, Dr. Cornelius Lapierre, the Netherlands, and so many scientists. Dr. Patrick Moore, he was one of the co-founders yeah. of Greenpeace. Yeah. So many of them. I think there's uh, over 1,500 now accredited scientists who have all say that carbon dioxide is not the cause of climate change. Now, the climate does change, but it ain't carbon dioxide. Now, what, what is it that the climate change pundits or promoters, the carb anthropogenic, what are they saying? What is their argument? And then we'll go into disassembling it, if that can be done. Well, I, I, I don't think we can disassemble it because it has no real meaning. It has, it, it, it has no basis. Fundamentally, they, um, you see, originally, back in the uh, 1856, an Irish um, scientist by the name of Fleming did some studies. And it, 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 there was another guy, oh, what was his name? Arthenius, I think. And they did some studies in closed systems. So in other words, they put carbon dioxide into a bottle or into a, a, a big jar uh, and water vapor into a system and they shot, they, they, they put some heat through it and they see, the problem is heat is a different electromagnetic wavelengths and the electromagnetic wavelengths are for, for, for what they call the black body heat or the, about black body energy is the energy that is reflected from the sun back off the earth. The earth r r takes in the heat right across the electromagnetic uh, wavelengths from uh, ultraviolet across to infrared. And there, it reflects some of this energy back into space. And they shot this electromagnetic energy at the wavelengths of the black body wavelengths. And they found that some was retained within the carbon dioxide in a closed system or within the methane in a closed system. And they were claiming that this, in effect, was reflecting it back to Earth. Um, the studies were totally flawed, fundamentally, because they were doing it in a closed system, whereas we're in an open system. An open, an open system is fundamentally where heat and energy is coming in and out, coming on and off the planet. That's not a closed system. It's not like a, a, a bottle of, of methane or a bottle of carbon dioxide. So the, the original studies were flawed. And so they came across the idea that, and there is definitely a greenhouse effect. In other words, the atmosphere are, are substances within the atmosphere definitely keep in heat, but 98 point something percent of it is water vapor that actually causes the, um, the reflection of heat or the retention of heat as, as in a greenhouse. Okay, so, so just on that, are you saying that water vapor, because I have heard this, and, and now you'd be another source to confirm that, that water vapor is a more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Hundreds, hundreds of times. 98% of the absorption of the black body radiation or the reflection of the black body radiation coming from the Earth 
is in effect that the the um, infrared radiation coming from the earth reflected back is um, is absorbed or retained by the water vapour. So in the absence of water vapour, the earth would be a much, 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 much colder place. Well, I, well, I think what we need to do is we need to stop emitting water. In order Absolutely, to save the planet. yes, yes. We yeah. To... Well, the fact that the planet is covered by is 72% water and there's only 28 percent of it is covered by earth or by land and um, it's going to be kind of difficult it is but that is fun. the problem that, that is, is the problem and yeah. of course this water vapor then becomes uh, the, this water as a gas turns into 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 droplets in the atmosphere and causes clouds so the whole you see the problem fundamentally is that the whole weather conundrum is massively, massively complicated. Yes. And even the top experts don't understand it because it, it is governed by things like the rotation of the Earth, um, the axis of rotation of the Earth, the, the, the uh, shape of the rotation of the Earth, or the, the, the um, ovoid shape that the Earth takes around the sun. Then there are particles coming off the sun which are influenced by the Earth's uh, magnetic field. And then there's particles coming in from the uh, from the cosmos, you know, from from outside of the solar system, and these are coming in, and all of these things when they strike the Earth would cause well, cloud formation. Well, there's a few more, uh, Jerry, that you've missed out that are outside the Earth. There's also the pull of the outer planets. Oh, absolutely! They, oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. have a gravitational pull pulling the Earth away from the Sun, which has. A oh, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's all also, massively complicated. Causing the Earth's crust to expand, which leads to more right. earthquakes and, and volcanoes. The tides, the, the tides are actually influenced by the gravitational pull, principally of the sun. But also, there's an influence of the, the, the massive planets that are way out further in the solar system. No, the, the reality of it is that we don't know. We, have, we really don't know what causes climate change. You know. And the reality is, in the last 100 years, the climate has gone up. We're coming out of an ice age and the, te the temperature has gone up by one degree. But even that's very, very difficult to examine because 100 years ago, there were very, very few weather stations. And yes. an awful lot of them were actually outside of cities, which are now encased in concrete. And concrete has what they call an urban island uh, effect that it retains heat. So cities are generally are always hotter than the surrounding countryside. And if you had a weather station in the countryside 100 years ago or 50 years ago, um, it's giving a different reading. So it's all massively complicated. But what we do know is that carbon dioxide, the Earth could do with twice as much carbon dioxide. We could do with 800, time, 800 parts per million. We do with 1,000 parts per million. And all we would do is getting additional greening of the Earth. We yes. would get... And the other thing about it is the um, the plants that grow in arid areas grow better because they they close down the little openings in the in their leaves and don't expire don't 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 put out water um, at the same rate so you you get the higher the carbon dioxide you have in arid areas the more growth you have of um, plants it's, right. it's 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 all it's all totally contrary to the story that the idiots in um, you know, a, a, a Extinction Rebellion, these clowns, you know, they haven't a clue. Their ignorance is, is astounding when it comes to the rubbish they talk, you know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but, am, but, I, but, am, am I sitting on the fence here too much? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> the, um, and, and I'm not either. I, I, don't pref I don't think there's any so, such thing as objectivity. We all have our biases. But I think oh, it's absolutely. important to keep questioning and looking and listening to the other side of the argument. I, I've had uh, you on. I've had Dr. Judith Curry, who's yeah, uh, she's fabulous. Friend. She's fabulous. I've also had uh, Steve Malloy, who's a campaigner and a lawyer on environmental issues. I've also had uh, David Siegel, who's a journalist and writes on them. And I've reached out to the Green Party, Extinction Rebellion, Just Stop Oil, Christians for Climate Action. I thought the Christians would come and spell the gospel, spread the gospel of climate change. None of them are willing to talk. And of course, they can't. They can't. How can they when you're talking rubbish and lies? I mean, I mean that, that to me is a is a is a sign because an authentic grassroots movement, people are willing to talk. We have to talk in because that's what that's how we grow and develop. That's how we learn through debate and discussion. But the climate change people, all they want to do is shut down debate, shut down discussion, not engage in it themselves. 
and censor anybody who disagrees, just like the Vatican censored um, Galileo, just like the guy was the surgeon who came up with washing hands. I f- keep forgetting his name. He got um, sent- oh Fleming, not Fleming, not Fleming, no, Samir no. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forget or, now. I, I, Dr. Francis Kelsey was censored because she warned about thalidomide. So yeah. the establishment shut her down. So that's not science. Or Andrew Wakefield. Look what they did to Andrew Wakefield. That's right. And more and nice more. Nice guy. Stuff. I chatted to him a while ago. Lovely, lovely guy. Yeah. And more and more stuff coming out about how harmful regular vaccines are. Now, we have to be careful if we want this to go on. Well, the, the, the reality of it is, the reality of it is, there's a lot of questions to be asked. And we, we we not only have a, 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 a responsibility and an obligation to do it, but we, we, we have an obligation to insist that it's done, that, yes. that discussions on everything are done. And um, if, 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 if any doctor says that we shouldn't discuss anything about medicine, well, then they're not doctors. They, they, oh. they don't come under the heading of doctor. Same with scientists. You have to keep questioning. You have to keep questioning. Just have to keep, we have to keep questioning. Otherwise, we, okay, fine. Just do as you're told and roll up and have your 27th booster. Or that's what's happening. That's what's happening. People yeah. are getting their eighth and ninth booster. And the funny thing is, these people are still getting COVID. Yes. I know. What's it? The um, Howard Stern, he's at eight boosters. And on his Twitter, he was saying, he's, he's saying, like, I'm still getting COVID. He didn't say that. Had, did he? Yeah, he did say that. He's at eight boosters. A, a, a couple of years ago, that would have qualified you for immediate, immediate admission to a mental hospital. In all honesty, I would have been signing what we refer to as a pink form on the likes of that. that that sheer lunacy. Well, it just goes to show about the lunacy that's going on in the world right now. OK, now back to, back to climate change. OK, yep. the, one, of the, one of the things that I understand about science is what you said about reproducibility again and again and again and again and again, but also at different scales. Yes. So, for example, um, if I have a litre of water in one atmosphere of pressure and I apply heat to that water, it will boil at 100 degrees C. Yeah. If I have a thousand litres of water at one atmosphere of pressure and I apply sufficient energy, it will boil at 100 degrees. Yep. Regardless of scale. You just got to put more heat into it. Yeah, regardless of scale, right? Now, one of the things that I think everybody accepts, right, is that the sun does have an impact on our climate and on our weather. So I think the sun the sun is the primary driver of I all the so. climate. All I think so too. I think so too. But there are people out there who think 0.04% of carbon dioxide is way more impactful and powerful for the sun. Except when it comes to the climate change predictions, which is all based on models, they talk about carbon dioxide as the critical factor. But when it comes to tomorrow's weather, Carbon dioxide, you know, the, the forecaster never says about, oh, carbon dioxide levels are going to change or whatever, and therefore it's going to be warmer or colder. Could you speak to that? Well, of course, the, 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 the problem really is that they endeavor to, everything that they say about carbon dioxide and methane is based on computer modeling. And the, 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 the rise would base, the problem with computers is it's rubbish in, rubbish out. So if you put rubbish information into a computer and you don't be surprised if rubbish comes out. The problem is that, what, 40 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, they started to do these computer programs. And they all coincidentally, because of the input, ended up with a sort of three degree rise, uh, you know, at the end of this century. Uh, nothing has happened that would suggest there's going to be a three degree rise. The the rise is kind of 0.5 or 0.3 of a degree or something over that 40 year period. The um so they, they they've had to throw out the computer programs. Now they're not admitting they threw out the computer programs. What they're doing now is you, you they don't talk about computer programming from a point of view of climate change because climate change is so much nicer in a sense you can mix everything up and then you can lie about forest fires you can lie about tornadoes you can lie about um you, you know what, what's happening due to the decadal uh, rhythms of the t- uh, of, of um the currents ocean currents el nino and those sorts of things so you 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 can construe these in any way you like in the absence of a computer uh, projection or a computer model, and and this, so in effect, they 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 have gone 
as I say, when I was in college in, in UCG, when I was doing chemistry originally, and they were telling us they were going into a period of global cooling. I that the that. yeah, and the ice that that there were going to be icebergs and glaciers down around the Empire State Building and the Statue of Liberty on the front pages of magazines at that stage. We saw uh, pictures of the a glacier up to, halfway up the Statue of Liberty. And this is what, what they were telling us was coming. I was in college. I was in UCG at that stage. And then towards the end of the, the, the 70s, the 1970s, they decided, your man, Michael Mann, came along with his hockey stick of temperatures and the uh, carbon dioxide rise and linked the two in. Now, he forgot to mention, as did the, uh, the vice president, what was his name, Al Gore, they forgot to mention that, in effect, the um, global warming preceded the rise in carbon dioxide. So throughout history, millions and millions of years, we now know and everybody agrees that first thing that happens is the carbon dioxide goes, or rather the temperature goes up, and sometime later up goes the, um, the carbon dioxide. And the reason for that fundamentally is that the warmer water gets, and if water even heats by one degree or half a degree, it pushes out, it gases out carbon dioxide. So one of the reasons why the um, the carbon dioxide rise follows um, heat, rising temperature and the rising temperature is caused by the sun and the, the variations in the sun um, is that water holds less less carbon dioxide the hotter it gets. It's a simple experiment. You put some carbonated water or seven up into a bowl and heat it up, and what comes out of it only gas carbon dioxide. So. Um, as I say, what I was saying, initially there was global cooling, then global warming. And then when the planet just wouldn't cooperate with their, their um, yeah, they, 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 no, the planet was extremely, extremely ungrateful to, to man, for, to, to, to these guys. Um, it wouldn't cooperate. It wouldn't heat as it was supposed to. So they decided to ditch the, uh, the computer models and go for something that was more nebulous and more difficult to trace and track. Well, think- and of course, then they changed the history. They changed yeah. the history. I the hottest it, period in, in recent history, in, in the last 100 years, was 1936, when John Steinbeck was writing his books, The Grapes Are Off, and yeah. Travel with Charlie, and East of Eden, and those. So, like, the, 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 the Dust Bowl in America was during the hottest period. Like, they were, they were scorching periods then, but they, they've obliterated them from history. Yeah, well, they don't, yeah, they don't talk about them. Um... It's a, it's a sense. There's also censorship by omission, and I yes. think, I think, I, I, as far as I understand, they're still doing the modelling, but they changed the terms. Went from global warming to climate change, and climate change means oh, it's raining, climate change. Oh, yeah. it's cloudy, climate change. Anything and everything can be climate change. And I noticed the languaging. Um, how a few weeks ago there were uh, some mainstream media reports talking about we're going to be sizzling in 21 degrees C. Yeah. 21 degrees. How are we going to survive, Doctor, in 21 degrees? <laughs> very, very frightening altogether. But see, this, is, this is where they, they, they'll take a cutoff point. Back in the beginning of the um, 20th century, 19, 19, 16, 17, 18, 20, and that night, you know, there were massive forest fires. Mm. And forest fires in America are down something like 90%. But they could take a period during, say, 1968 or something, where, in fact, forest fires dropped off. And since then, there has been a kind of neglect of the forestry system, and uh, forest fires are going up ever so slightly. So they show you this graph, and they expand the graph to to, to give the impression that forest fires are up by 50%, whereas they're down since the the early 1900s to um, by 90%. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I completely get it. And another warm period that's completely omitted from the discourse is Chaucer's time. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. 16th yes. century Britain. The medieval, Britain. yeah, but there's been a major medieval warm period. By, yeah, they tried the medieval warm period. And yeah, what was that? Anglesey, was, what, what university was it? I don't, that they, they, East there was Anglia, a leakage, University of East Anglia. That's right, Anglia. They, um, th- there was a leakage of, um, of their emails where they were discussing getting rid, how are we going to hide or how are we going to get rid of the medieval warm period? Because it didn't fit in with the concepts of there being a natural variation and a cycle. A, a cycle. Like in the 17th century, uh, they, they, they were, uh, there was a regularly, there were ice fairs on the Thames, yeah. Thames River. Like the, the ice was sort of two feet thick on the Thames River f- during full winters, I think for about 150 years. Yeah. Well, well, the other thing that that points to is, well, 
is well, what's so bad? If if the planet is warming, what's so bad? We have milder winters. We have longer. That's right. We, That's right. we want. I love figs, Jerry. I love figs. I could have a, lots and lots of figs in southern England. We could have figs in northern England like they did during the medieval warm period. And cold kills more people than heat. Oh, tend to. And you could develop a lovely tan as well, couldn't you? <laughs> All the year round. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas I, I, I would just continue to burn in the sun. <laughs> so I, I really should be against that extra one degree heating. Uh, I know, but but okay. Here's something else. We all enjoy the sun, even those that have yeah, fair yeah. skinned, right? Which I we think, need it. Yeah, which I think is is a evolutionary response to the positive effects of the sun because it isn't just vitamin D. There's lots of other benefits that we get from the sun, including mood, including the infrared radiation, which heats us up on, all the way inside, is very good for our health, and all sorts of other possibly unknown benefits that we haven't studied yet. So, which is why we like sunbathing. We like being in the sun. It's, 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 a, natu it's, a, natu it's a natural phenomenon within mammals anyway. Yeah. That, 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 you know, obviously, you, you, you just watch your dog. Hey, maybe panting away, but a great big fur coat, and it'll go out and sit in the sun. Yeah, or a, or a yeah. cat. Absolutely. A cat, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Now, um, why are the, there are scientists who say that CO two is the most dangerous thing? I don't think they do. I don't think there are scientists that say that. I think there are scientists that will couch their discussion. To give the impression it is, but when you read down through their papers, you realise that in fact that's not what they're saying. Um, they, they 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 will endeavour to try and link pretty much everything to, to to carbon dioxide or methane, but that's in an effort to get grants because the, the, the fundamental problem is that there is has been a massive amount of money made through globalism, and people. You see, this is where I get into sort of conspiracy theory, and this is a conspiracy theory. I believe that there is an effort to kill off people. I believe there is an effort to um, Malthusian idea to reduce world population. I believe that a lot of the global, the, the, the climate change rubbish is based on reducing uh, food uh, production. I believe they're trying to destroy farming. And I, you know, I, 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 on a tangent here, I believe that the next scare we're going to get is going to be avian flu, the bird flu, the H5N1, which they will be proving by virtue of a PCR test. Mm -hmm. The PCR test, a similar test, will be cycled at 45 times. And they will be telling us that these birds all have avian flu on, on the basis of our PCR test. And we're going to have to slaughter half a million Birds on this farm or on, on that farm or in this county, and they're going to they're going to get rid of chicken meat, and they're going to get rid of eggs. But not then, just chickens, not then, just chickens, because they're saying that this this type, this new type, jumps species, so they're going to have to uh, inject beef, cows yeah, with the RNA injections. Yeah, that that that, that is that is that you know, and it it'll probably do to the cows the exact same thing as it did to humans. They increase decrease fertility, so you won't be able to get calves. And uh, the, the, the whole, and probably kill them off. Or then they'll turn around and say, well, we can't actually feed humans with this meat because it's got a spike protein in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but don't, this, this don't, is very malevolent. It, it, but don't, no, no, Jerry. No, no, because Bill Gates will come to the rescue with his, um, all his investments into insect protein and we can eat bugs. And then well, what, what and they will be doing, happy. They'll actually be making protein. They'll be making, they'll be making meat products out of protein. But unfortunately, on the, the, what they'll do is they'll put, Vats, big steel vats of amino acids in and produce, you know, and collagen and that and produce meat. And they're doing this. They're actually producing meat yes. in big steel vats. And it, 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 it's, it, it, it actually saves the suffering of these, these poor cattle. Now, these cattle wouldn't exist if it weren't for a meat industry or that. So, yeah. you know, there, there's an ethical problem there, undoubt, undoubtedly. But um, what I'm saying is they, they produce this meat. But in effect, it would be so energy, it, it would consume so much energy just to make this meat that um, you sure as hell won't eat any of it. I might because I'm wealthy. <laughs> well, well, I'll stick to wood. I'll have to scurry around looking for wood lice in the garden. Well, or yeah, yeah. The, yeah, t tasty little buggers, I imagine, you know. Well, my understanding is that there, there are compounds in the chitin, in the exoskeleton, that, that we can't we can't digest. And chitin is is toxic for human beings, carcinogenic, and there are parasites in insects that we have no resistance to. 
I've absolutely no doubt about that. That the um, yeah, yeah, of course we had, but but what are you saying that somehow or other that's the reason why you shouldn't eat it? Don't be silly. Don't be silly. <laughs> I actually do prefer... Just because, just because it kills you doesn't mean you shouldn't eat it. <laughs> fair, fair point, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just I going have... along with the medical profession's philosophy over the last four years. Yes, I think you are being a little bit conspiratorial because everybody knows that farming is really bad for us. Farming yes. is bad for the... It's... Now, here's another tell. They never talk about the environmental damage of war. What... What activity oh, yes, yes. is more destructive to human beings and the environment than dropping white phosphorus or depleted uranium in Iraq or digging up metals to fly across the sky and drop on people in foreign lands? Apparently, that's all carbon neutral. Oh, it's, it's so sad to see a young man like you with such a tinfoil hat. How could you come up with some, such batty ideas? You know war is good for everybody. Yeah, killing people, you know, burning off billions. Of, well, what, what about the, the Nord Stream uh, oil? Yes, uh, they're those dastardly Russians like, blowing up their own pipe stream. They're so. Oh, I imagine. I, I, I imagine that was a mistake. I think that someone probably left a match behind or something like that. You know, somebody. I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if someone didn't leave a big lighter down, down at the bottom of the sea, and somehow or other it set off an explosion in that. And, no, I, d I, d I doubt the Americans or the British or the Swedes or the Germans or the Ukrainians actually put it, by all accounts. They have no, they have no self interest. Okay, now taking it back to back to um, climate change. Right now, my understanding, what the argument is, that through human activity, we're adding so much carbon dioxide to the atmosphere that it's warming up the atmosphere. Yes. Wrong. No, no, but that's the, that's their argument. Oh, yes, sorry. Yeah, argument, sorry. Right? No, yeah, it's a warm... conditioned reflex. Okay. <laughs> in a warmer atmosphere, you have more humidity. Yes. Yeah, so you have more humidity, you have more moisture, you have rain. So now we have carbon dioxide. And you've got clouds. Oh, you've got clouds, clouds that actually cools the planet. That cools the planet. Okay, but 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 we got carbon dioxide, and we're still generating more. So, the, so there's a, I suppose, a feedback or whatever. It's still warming up, and we get more clouds, and then we get rainfall, and we get more carbon dioxide. So you have carbon dioxide plus warmth plus water in the presence of daylight. Do you know what that is as a scientist? Carbon I, would imagine, I imagine you've got a problem with all those bloody plants growing even That's more. Right. <laughs> all, 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 that, all that photosynthesis. That's you know? right. All the, I mean, th this is how twisted it, 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 It'll be like a tropical bloody de jungle after a while. You like know? the Amazon. In Devon and Cornwall. Oh my God! And then we'd have mangoes, we'd have figs, we'd have year-round fruits, we'd have incredible biodiversity because there's so much energy and vibrancy within the plant life. Like you have incredible biodiversity in the Amazon or the Congo. That's right. Because, so, so then, well, what? I, I, I can't get this, this. Is the masterful trick that the WEF propagandists have played on us? Well, it, it, it's it's the IPCC. The, the, the IPCC and NOAA, the you know the IPCC is what the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and NOAA is the um, uh, National o Oceanic uh, o AA and Atmospheric Association, or something to that. Th these are the people who are actually pulling the, the, these stunts, and these are the ones that are the IPCC was set up fundamentally to prove that mankind was altering the the um, the atmosphere, and it's there. It, it, it's it's their job to actually prove that mankind has it, it, that it, all these things are anthropogenic, um, and if they if they in any way proved otherwise, they'd be out of a job. So the whole the whole con trick is the IPCC will actually, which is part of the United Nations, um, is, is there to to propagate the lies and the the um. Now the fun thing is, if you actually read the IPCC reports. There's a certain amount of truth in them, but the ne the media never picks up the truth because the media, fundamentally, the problem is the media. If the media actually began to do their job to the degree of sort of ten percent or twenty percent, if you know, tell the truth, um, none of this would be possible because or, 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 the truth is least, so much stronger than the, than the lies. Yes, or at least ask questions. That's they right. They don't even do yeah. that. They yeah. don't even do that. And just on the IPCC, their charter is to confirm that anthropogenic right. climate change is real. That's different from inquiring into what's the source of it. 
Well, theoretically, they were set up to fight to find out why it happened, but it, it transpires that they're there to prove that it happens rather than know why it happens. And of course, the scientists on that, who who, who will put their signatures to documents, um, know that their salary is guaranteed as long as they lie. Yeah, which is which is what happened with Dr. Judith Murray. She yeah. she did some research. Said no, 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 it ain't carbon dioxide. She lost her funding. Yeah, she, Curry, yeah, Curry, she, yeah, she, she's brilliant. Yeah, she, yes, but she lost her position, lost her funding, and now she's had to work independently. So the, the which is the same thing that's happened to doctors with the with the whole coronavirus. Oh yes, in, in Australia, yeah. particularly in Australia, there's a couple of them there who are going against the, the the agenda of the Great Barrier Reef being destroyed. There's a number of them. I think there's a lady by the name of Mara Hassi, and she um she she studies the great the. Uh, the Barrier Reef, and she said it's it's not in trouble at all. But the Australian government want to push the idea of the, bar, the Great Barrier Reef, the coral, and the Great Barrier Reef is in danger because of increased um, ocean temperature, which has probably gone up, if if at all, by by one tenth of a degree. Um, and in, in effect, corals grow better in in hot, hot hotter water. You know, it's it, corals are fundamentally tropical. You don't get a lot of them off the coast. Well, you do. You get some off the coast of Ireland and England, but you know they're fundamentally a tropical kind of thing. And uh, every now and again, due to ocean currents, there's an area of coral is damaged, and they they talk about the bleaching. And the bleaching is due to a little um other uh, an algae or, uh, that grow in the in the um, coral and gives it its color. And apparently, they die off. And um, but Marahasi constantly. Uh, is constantly writing papers on the fact that the coral, the Great Barrier Reef, is not in trouble at all. But the, uh, the Australian government, of course, the Australian governments are one of the most corrupt governments now, along with uh, the Canadians and, of course, New Zealand, and of course the Irish as well. The Irish, you, you guys had it so bad during the whole COVID episode. Yeah, we, yeah, we, 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 we we've got, we, we've been blessed with some of the most mendacious and lying bastards you ever came across covering us. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, did I, did, I, did I say something wrong? No, not at all. You said something very accurate. <laughs> okay. Now, um, the other thing is, uh, I do, do, do you want to say what the other factors are that impact the climate? Everything. Everything. Everything impacts the climate in a sense that it's, um, it, 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 it's, it's a small, thin layer of gas that is pretty much full of water vapour. And um, it, 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 it fundamentally is influenced by the sun and the reflective, the, uh, what they call albedo, the, the ability of the earth to absorb heat from the sun. All, all heat, all energy comes from the sun. And it's how that sun gets to the earth, heats up the earth, heats up the water, and um, wh whatever reflection there is off the clouds. And as I say, the, the clouds are actually governed by the solar particles and the cosmic particles cosmic and they're influ and they're influenced by the um magnetic both the mag well the, the the solar particles are caused by the magnetic fluxes in the sun and the magnetic uh, magnetic fields of the earth protect us from those um yeah. from the solar part these tiny tiny particles coming from the sun from uh, from solar uh, flashes or what they call them, solar eruptions. Um, it's all very, very complex. And the truth is, nobody understands what it is. But what they do understand is that the Earth has risen the degree by about one degree, uh, 1.3 degrees in the last 100 years. And if, if it rises by another 1.3 degrees or two degrees in the next 100 years, we'll really be in a much more pleasant place. Longer summers hotter summers, milder winters, but also it's risen since, it's been rising since 1850, which was when That's the right. Ice Age ended, the last mini Ice Age. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly, since since, since the, you, you could skate on the Thames. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, the, the, we're coming out of a, well, we're coming out of a major Ice Age, and that was just a dip, a little bit of a dip for 150 years. The, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the it, we're going, and we, and we could have another dip, I I really wouldn't like to too. I wouldn't be too happy if if the Earth would decide to, were to go into another hundred and fifty years of uh, skating uh, skating on the on, on the Thames or the Liffey or you yes. know a land, a land bridge between Ireland and Wales. You would, those bloody Welsh they'd be they'd be they'd be coming. 
<laughs> What's the English you got to worry about, right? They're the, really, they're, the, they're the proper imperialists. Yeah, yeah, you know. But, but, no, if that, that was free. cooling, that would be much, much worse for us because we'd have longer winters. We'd have well, shorter growing would, seasons. The problem would fundamentally be with, with, with growth. Of, of grass and and um, and vegetables and wheat and you know like there the, you know crop the crops would suffer massively from and as you say about the, the colder the air the, the less heat uh, less water vapor it, it, it contains you know so that you you, you the, the warmer humid air will actually is a recipe for growing plants mm. whereas the colder drier air. Um, in the Andes, days, the air is so cold, there's no water in it at all, which result that to get these mummies sort of lying around in that up in the Andes, where the air is so cold that, the, you know, the, 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 um, and there's so little water in them that the, uh, the mummies kind of live, I was going to say live for 100 years, exist for 100 years. Yes, well, I know is it parts of the Atacama Desert. That's right, can, yeah. It's never, ever been known to rain. That's right. Yeah. And, um, you know, whatever rain just doesn't get across the, the Andes. Yeah. OK. All right. Jerry, thank you so much. Um, I really, really appreciate this conversation. And any, if anybody who's watching and you're connected to somebody who, I don't know, writes or studies or is a scientist with the whole climate change agenda or one of the campaigning parties, look, reach out to me via Twitter at CryptoRichYT. Um, I'll have a conversation with anyone. I'm about to have a conversation. I mean, this pro-EU party have reached out to me to come on my channel. Pro UE party, a pro e EU party. I said, sure, I'll talk to you. you. Just, just so you know, I'm pro Brexit, but I'll talk to you. I'll talk to anyone. That should be interesting. Yes, yes. Well, I'll tell them about how bankrupt the EU is that the mainstream media don't talk about at all. Okay, so, Jerry. Anything you want to say? Uh, we're recording this on the third of June. It's going to go out on the seventh of June, which is the day that people get to vote. In the European uh, I prefer I prefer it without the sixth of June, quite frankly. But I suppose I can't dictate your um, your timetable. Um, I know, I, no, I listen. You want it out on the sixth? Well, obviously, I, it all depends it's on how good. It it's going to go up. Good. Sorry, Jerry. It it's going to go up before the seventh. I could do it. Um, I can do it on the on the fifth or the sixth. Yeah, yeah, but now I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe all 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 my blathering on for the last half hour will actually turn people off. No, but I would hope it won't. And uh, maybe somebody who happens to see it in, in, in north of Kildare to, to Galway in Ireland will um, give me the vote on the basis that I do talk. A re I have a reasonable amount of knowledge on, <laughs> on these matters. And I wouldn't be in danger in Europe. Yes. Well, I think uh, on the basis of your recent, well, actually your history that you've shared with, with me and also your stand against these experimental injections that... If people do vote for you, they're voting for someone who stands by their principles and isn't will, will not just follow the crowd and do what everybody else does. I think, I think the other point of relevance is that I have pledged to give my salary, all of my salary. To, I, 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 40 years in, in general practice has made me comfortable enough not to worry about money. I, am, I have pledged to give all of my salary to... There's certain things I'm particularly interested in. I'd like to help the vaccine injured. I'd like to I'd like to investigate what went on with the um with the corruption in, in, in governments and that. And um I'd also like to finance people who are who try to get into political parties. So I would like to set up a movement to finance people going into local government and and, and running for elections out of my salary. Um as I say, I have no interest in it. It, it, this sounds ridiculous, but as far as money goes, I'm incorruptible. I, I, I've, I've enough of it. I really don't need it. And, and I do happen to have a Bentley Continental sitting outside my front window there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No, you did. You did this, said that when uh, I did an interview with you, Maliki Steens, Steens, another independent candidate running in Dublin for an MEP and also uh, as a local councillor, that uh, your salary, you will, your MEP salary, you will donate to supporting people who've been hurt by the injections and also for. Uh, investigating how this whole corrupt project was conducted and came about, and and, and but you will still use the expenses because you need to get to Brussels. And I, yeah, yeah. You know, honestly, I, I I don't intend to spend my my my, my miserly pension <laughs> on them um, on, on getting back and forth to, to Brussels. See, the other thing about it is I would intend to go to Brussels. I would intend to be there as often as feasible. 
and uh, make myself as awkward as possible because I'm I I I'm a, a bit like you one in what was the film Kill Bill? You know where she she where she she killed off thirty or forty people, you know thirty or forty or fifty or hundred people in in Europe don't intimidate me. Very good, very good, Jerry. Thank you so much. And I just want to uh, add to what you said and then finish up, which is that if you're voting on June the seventh in the European elections in Ireland or actually anywhere in Europe, right? Vote for nationalist, sovereignist, freedom-loving candidates. Don't put your vote against any of the mainstream establishment parties. They're all captured by the WEF, whether it's Labour or the Tories or the Lib Dems or the Greens in the UK or um, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael and Sinn Féin and the SDP and the Greens in Ireland. They're all captured by the WEF and you're going to get the same thing, the same policies from all of them. If you want to make a difference, if you want your nation, your people, your traditions, your culture, your religions looked after, then you have to vote for sovereignists. Jerry, thank you so much. I look forward to having you on again. Thank you. Share this video far and wide. Educate yourself. It ain't carbon dioxide. That's the enemy. It's plant food. And between now and when I see you next, go enjoy some sunshine and vote for freedom. Crypto Rich and Crypto Jerry signing out. All the best. Bye bye. Thank you.